Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hi, this is Celine Williams, hosting from Ontario for Canada's podcast. My guests today are Margie Richardson and Kellen Smith, the founders of High Peak Nutrition. Welcome to to the show. Thanks for being here. Awesome. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. Um, So as you know, Canada's podcast is all about telling the story of entrepreneurs. So um, Margie, I'm going to ask you to go first, but I'd love to hear a little bit about how you got into the world of entrepreneurship? What led you to founding and creating High Peak Nutrition? Yeah, so for for me, I mean, I've always liked to try things and we'll say feebly attempt things here and there. Um, but working, you know, full time and having a stable job is ultimately what I ended up leaving to, to do this. So it kind of came by way of just kind of falling in love with what we were doing and genuinely wanting to share it with other people uh, is, is actually how it all kind of started. So um, when we had the opportunity, we jumped at it um, and we packed up our lives. And at that time, it was two dogs and a one and a half year old um, and Kellen. And we moved across the country to start our entrepreneurial journey. So what got you, Kel and I will get to in a second, I promise. What what drove your interest in nutrition? So to jumping into entrepreneurship is one thing, but like clearly something drove you to get into this world of nutrition to then jump into actually being an entrepreneur in the world of nutrition. Yeah, so um, it may come as a surprise, but it was actually my postpartum depression that really kind of motivated me to make changes for myself, um, which is kind of what drove us to this whole lifestyle all in all. So um, I had postpartum depression with our first daughter, um, which, you know, came with medication, therapy, all those kinds of things, of course. Uh, Then I realized that eating better and the direct correlation with the inflammation within my system. So ultimately, I was able to reduce a lot of that chronic inflammation, which made my postpartum depression more manageable, which led to being able to get healthier in the long run. Got it. And I think that I thank you for sharing that. I think it's really important that um, one, I don't think we talk about things like postpartum depression enough, and that's a whole other conversation. Um, But two, (laughs) I think it's really important to acknowledge that there are situations and moments like that that drive us to find new ways of living, whatever the case may be, that then we see an opportunity in a market to, to jump into as an entrepreneur. And so I appreciate you sharing that because I think it's, it's important. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Kellen, how about you? How did you, can you tell us a little bit about your journey, both into nutrition and, you know, uh, into this world of entrepreneurship? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, so for myself, I'm going to start with the second question and work back. So um, I was an electrician in the oil fields. You know, I'd work 12 hours up to 14 hours, even longer than that in a day. Uh, I get out in the morning, go, you know, to the gas station, uh, grab my lunch. Um, so for that, um, every day, you know, getting a bag of chips, getting some chocolate, whatever, whatever fills me up and keeps me going with the sugar rush for the day um, is is what started to gain weight and started to feel worse, I guess, just overall feeling not very great. Um, So for myself, um, getting out there every single day and starting to understand how poor, um, not even just work, um, but just even at home, we had a little baby at home, she was about 10 months old, I'd come home, I'd be so tired, didn't want to play, didn't want to do anything. So uh, it was naturally just for me to be able to keep up with a growing small little baby um, is what turned into uh, becoming an entrepreneur through the nutrition side of things. Um, and knowing and, and helping other people do that uh, through my own journey uh, is, is why we started to get into this. So I thank you for that. So I know I asked this question before, and neither of you were entrepreneurs prior to this, and you dove (laughs) right in to not only the world of entrepreneurship, but partnering with your spouse, which is a whole ball game in and of itself. So I'm, (laughs) I'm curious, um, what were some of the challenges you faced in both of those things as you dove in? Like, I think for serial entrepreneurs, people who are like, I've been running businesses off and on or on the side for years, it's easier. I'm not saying it's without challenges, but easier to step into entrepreneurship the way that you did 
especially if it's with a spouse. But I think just with a partner in that way is added. So this is like multi-layered kind of like, what were some <laughs> of the challenges? How has this been? Go, go ahead, Marge. I'll let, I'll let you start it off. <laughs> I'm sure you have more to say. <laughs> well, that probably sums it up right there, the way you said that. Um, so often, it, you know, I, I think some blind faith had a lot to do with it. Uh, just kind of taking, taking the leap. So the way we kept looking at it, when we made the choice, it was about a six month turnover. So we said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to move back to Southern Ontario from Saskatchewan. Uh, so how are we going to kind of play this out? We got all those ducks in a row is really what it, what it came down to where our focus was. And truth be told, we didn't really have a great concrete plan from there. Um, you know, we, we were not smart by way of setting out job descriptions, even for ourselves, right? And that we could really see the push and the shove when it comes to your relationship, because no different than I expect the kitchen to be cleaned one way and he does it a different way. That still applies when you're working and it's under a magnifying glass, right? So there'd be expectations that maybe I would think that he would pick up that he wasn't picking up and vice, and vice versa. So it took a lot of being honest with each other, uh, communication, uh, and then also bringing in a business coach to be almost like that mediator during that initial phase to have that conversation. Because sometimes it's easier to hear it from a third party than it is to hear it from your spouse. It's always now, Kellen easy. might have a completely <laughs> different experience than I did. <laughs> No, not at all. No, not at all. You're right, though, with the uh, business coach or the the coach that we had for each other, that really uh, helped us uh, create separate paths in what we were trying to do. It was all the same end goal, but at the same time, just how to get there and, and meet up essentially at the end. And I think yeah. it's sorry, go ahead, Margie. No, I was just saying, and we, we both came from very different backgrounds. I came from working in an office and in marketing, you know, also in automotive marketing. So when automotive marketing, you, especially as a female, tend to have to kind of step up a little bit more and be a little more assertive when you're when you're in that role in that position. And sometimes I would probably take that too far with Kellen because that's how I always I've always had to be have my checks and balances kind of in a row that way whereas he's very much doing electrical and being especially in oil and gas it was you get out there you work your butt off and when you're done he has the ability to be done so when he's this like when his day's over he's he's good he's checked out whereas I I do not function like that so it was finding that balance after could be it's it it's an ongoing struggle, but at least it's something that we've been able to learn how to manage over these past past three, four years. Well, it sounds like been able to learn how to manage, but also to talk about. Right. And that's a big thing is that sometimes we think we have to manage these things on our own internally, especially with partners, especially with spouses as partners where it, you know, you try to keep things separate and you end up not saying anything and it becomes this. I have to fix this all on my own, which doesn't actually move things forward. <laughs> the Kellen's already laughing. He's like, mm -hmm, that. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I commend you for hiring a coach and bringing someone in externally because a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs are very resistant to asking for help. It's the we talk about this a lot where people are like, you know, you'll have people who are very experienced who say, get mentors, find pe and then entrepreneurs are like, how do I find a mentor? How do I ask for help? How do I do all right. these things? So what how did you get to that? Like, what was it for you to say, we want someone else to step in and be that mediator or be that third party or we need help in this way? Was there something that incited that or was it was there a culmination of things? What how did that come about? Because I think that's a tough point for a lot of entrepreneurs. Um, for myself, what happened was I, I went down that route of almost like toxic positivity and personal development overload, 
right? Where you start to take on so much, but you're not ever even executing one of them, which leads you to almost feel like a failure, right? So there's this constant and almost vicious circle where we we try to learn from every little thing that we can, and it actually becomes too overwhelming and, and sets us back. So while having these conversations and just being aware of some people kind of within my own network, I was able to reach out to somebody and kind of just put some feelers out, get some good ideas. He was, I could see that he was doing things that I knew that we wanted to kind of replicate Replicate, uh, and he actually ended up setting us up with a different business coach that he thought that would be a really good pairing pairing for us, as that she had a nutrition and health background when it came to business specifically. So it sounds like you were kind of the driving force behind thinking this is what we need to do, and and Kellen, you were obviously on board with it, but less of the like driver of it. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Margie, when she, she gets something in her head and she plans it out, this, this is what we're going to do. And it's, um, it's amazing to watch that. Cause I can just, I, I like taking this, the backseat a little bit, so to speak. Right. I, I like the behind the scenes things. So when she she gets an idea in her head, it's, it's just awesome to watch. Yeah. And it sounds like one of the things that was lacking at the beginning that having now and probably going forward has been beneficial it has been beneficial to have and will to have going forward. That sentence made no sense, but it will in a second um, is is really around the clarity and the expectations. So clarity of how things are and how they were and how they maybe could be and the expectations around all of those pieces. Absolutely. And that's been the biggest the biggest key, I think. And it being able to for both of us step back and maybe put the work towards you know, hire somebody to take care of something, which was very difficult for me as a perfectionist to offload any of my work to anybody but myself. So, um, you know, there was, there was definitely some changes that way. And I think even with the expectations now, the important thing is that they're still fluid. They change just as quickly as they come in. And it's really about refocusing again on what those kind of micro goals are that lead us up to that end game. So can you, first of all, I just want to acknowledge how important that is to know that expectations are not and clarity is not one. It's not a thing you do once and then like, well, we're clear forever and all the expectations are set and we never have to talk about this again. Farewell, if only that was the case. <laughs> so let's just acknowledge that what you're saying is really important for everyone to hear that it's not that way. Right. It is constant. Yeah. Um, but I'm really curious if you can tell me a little bit about when you say micro goals. I think that that is probably a concept or term that people are going Oh, I don't understand. Like I just set goals. What is a, what do you mean by micro goals? Can you tell us what that is for you and how you have used them, you know, to move forward inside the work that you're doing? Yeah. So it's as big as like, we know where we want to take things. We know that we want to be a nationally recognized brand. That's not something that we can just do in the next 24 or 48 hours. So what are each step that's going to lead us up to that point and having a moderately realistic time frame? And I think I just made up a word there, but that's okay. Um, so, <laughs> cool. so, so just just so we, you know, in two years, we want to be at X, right? And knowing that that could shift and change because everything COVID happened, right? That shift and changed a thousand different things, but it's okay. How do we get there? What's that first step? So if that's that we're going to need more staff, okay, how do we make sure that we have the right incoming finances to be able to hire and train those staff members? Exactly. And then from there, how does that start to kind of roll out? So it's setting up all of those different kind of silos that the business is going to need and having action plans. So I guess the micro goals are more about kind of those mini action plans at the end of the day. It leads up to big ones, right? It leads up to your final goal. Those setting those small goals leads up to your final goal. So. And do you have, I have two questions. I'm going to start with one and I'm going to go a different direction in a second. Do you have a process or time frame or anything that you use to check those? Or do you kind of, you play it by ear and as it comes up or as it seems relevant, you step into it. I feel like Margie has a time frame, hundred percent the way she <laughs> works for myself. It'll get there. I, I don't know. It, you know, hun, like you do, you have something set in place every single day. 
Yes. And I think that, you know, that's one of the biggest things that I get kind of drowned in, right? Is that my day to days are set up very, very well. My end goals are set up very, very well. So it's actually that in between check in and that honesty with myself and with Kellen for those things. So I have found that it's better to bring in again, have an employee that's there to kind of do those in between checks coming from somebody else. Pardon me. <laughs> um, and not letting other things get in the way. It's so easy for us to be like, oh my gosh, we're so tired. The kids were exhausting today. Um, we're going to bed at eight o'clock tonight. We'll deal with it tomorrow. So it's really nice to be able to have people that we trust and that we can employ that say, that's great. However, we still need X, Y, and Z done today. Yeah. And I, and I appreciate that, that answer because I think that it's, it's important that everyone has different styles. There's no right way of doing it or wrong way. It's not Margie, your style's not right. Kellen, your style's not wrong. They're different. So what is the, how do you work together? And then to your, what you're saying, Margie, where's the opportunity to bring, to have an external lens or have something else to fill in where we're not strong? So I appreciate that. Um, I want to, I want to, you mentioned the pandemic. So I just want to COVID. So I want to flip this a little bit and ask how, (laughs) how, was that for you? How, like, what was the, I'm imagining like most of us, you had to make a lot of changes as a result of COVID to those goals, to how things operated. So how was that as a growing business in Canada? How did that affect you? What was your experience? So we decided um, that when COVID happened, it would be a great time to actually purchase two other locations. Great idea or not, I'm not sure, um, but, but here we are two and, a, yeah, two and a bit years later. Um, so when we did that, they were two brick and mortar locations um, out in Alberta and Saskatchewan at the time. So um, we knew we wanted to bring High Peak online. That was the end goal for High Peak. So we were actually able to utilize this to help kind of push us towards that a lot faster, just simply because everybody had to adapt to online a lot quicker, right? So there was less of that kind of learning curve and education process for our clients and new clients. So it was really, really beneficial in that way. Um, But we did also have to make choices, of course, right? So we did close down our location in Orangeville, Ontario, the actual brick and mortar portion, uh, as well as our one out in Wainwright, Alberta. So there was a lot of big, big changes that way Um, and then learning new programs right so we use like an educational platform to house all of our information for our clients in an app Um, so kind of getting used to that uh, having to figure out to do all of the notes for that the videos for that and there was just a lot more steps involved that we 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 were not prepared for Um, we were able to kind of work through it of course but it, it, I mean, it really did take a lot, right? We were both running the business from home. We were both living at home together. We had just had our son at that point. So we had a newborn baby. <laughs> um, and it just, yeah, it, it was a lot to take on. And it was really hard to start for like, I think a lot of people start to separate work from life and where does one kind of start and one kind of begin. Yeah. Kellen, is there anything you want to add to that? I want to Make sure that no, <laughs> yeah, no, like, like I said, <laughs> she she can talk. She's good at it. No, it it is. It's definitely hard to when when you're both living at home. You have, you have kids together. You're running a business together. To it's for me. I mean, turning it off. It's easy for Margie. It's not so uh, sitting down even in the morning, just saying, okay, this is what we're going to get done today. Um, you do your thing, and we'll come back at the end of the day and make sure that we're on the same page still, right? So because things change all the time, especially being at home, especially when the little one's crying or the other one has needs another. You know, there's there's always something happening. So uh, for us and in, in being able to um, for myself, anyways, to separate that was really beneficial throughout the the last two years. Yeah. So. Having moved to, having expedited the move to online, (laughs) possibly not exactly when you wanted to, but it was expedited. Um, How have, what has that been like for you? Like what has, have you found it? What were some of the challenges? What were some of the lessons you learned that maybe you're like, this worked really well, or this was not a good plan in moving online? I, for myself, the biggest thing that I learned was we don't 
get to decide what people are looking for and how they're going to respond to things. So as much as we think that this is going to be like A plus perfect, we've completely rolled this out. What do you mean you can't use this? Um, and then learning that maybe it's not as user friendly as we thought, or it's the message that we're conveying isn't being received the same way that we want it to be. Um, so that was one of the really big lessons that we learned is that it's really about listening to our clients um, and much less about what we think our clients always need to hear is, is one of the big lessons. Uh, and then the other kind of big lesson I learned is that we're not going to be able to appease everybody. Um, and that's a really, really hard lesson to learn, especially when you start out. We really wanted to, you know, if, if we could modify a price a little or if we could change this or, you know what, we'll let we can let this happen or do it became too much. And it actually ended up devaluating the program and the business. So really honing in on what we offer and offering it to the people that need it. Yeah. Kellen, do you want to add any lessons or that you learned good or bad? <laughs> Learning how to use a computer, to be honest with you, <laughs> I was kind of the test subject in the beginning. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not great on computers. I'm not great with it. So uh, learning the different platforms. And so when Margie picked a certain one to use, and then she's like, okay, you test it. You let us know how easy it is to use, user-friendly. We'd go that route, so to speak. Um, for, yeah, so I mean, doing that, learning all of that, um, when we had to close down the the Orangeville store there, uh, I love talking face-to-face. -face. That's where I really love to interact with people. It, it's fun. You get a better feel for it than on a screen sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, just trying to adapt to that for myself was a, was really difficult. I'm still learning every, every day. Right. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, it is, it's getting easier. I think it is the way to go for us here in Ontario. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I can appreciate that. I think that, uh, moving online, there's lots of people who had to, who did not have a really strong base to even know where to start, whether they were users or they were running a business that had to, to make that change. So I think it's a really important perspective to share that this is real. And this was real for a lot of people going through this. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I know that, um, I know that you have a program, but you also sell physical products as part of your business, correct? Yeah. So I'm yeah. curious. Um, it, so tell us a little bit about that. And also like how having both things where you are offering a program of some sort and products, those are can be now I'm going to say this. I recognize there's overlap in those markets in terms of people who go through the program, presumably are also interested in the products, but they're also it's a really different world, the world of any sort of consumer package good and a program. So what made you step in like where did the, why where was that desire how has it been exploring that world what has this been like i love that both of you are smiling as i'm asking this like you're like yeah we have thoughts oh. yeah yep i know for for myself um i have not a real design background by any regard but at least an, enough knowledge so this was we're talking super homegrown. Um, at the time, my office was in our walk-in closet because that's the way the space rolled out in the house with the kids and with everybody being there. So I spent a lot of time and a lot of frustration um, even just creating the new labels for our supplement line. So, you know, being in Photoshop and, and making those kind of changes and those modifications and then going through that entire design process was um, potentially one of the worst experiences <laughs> of my life, to be honest right. with you. I, you know, I, I absolutely, I thought I'd be finished it and be like, look at how great this is. And I feel so good. And I still don't have that feeling about it. Um, I'm happy it's done. There's a process you have to go through with health Canada approvals and printing and, and all this kind of back and forth. But my appreciation for brand specialists who do design like this now is higher than it ever been and especially when it comes from like a lot of this is very homegrown for us at the end of the day that we're like oh I can do that or I can figure it out right or I listened to x y or that or read a book on it so I can do it it's not it's not always that way so kind of getting those products to fruition for myself was 
it was a big, big struggle. It was, it was a lot of work. I'm happy they are, they are done and approved by Health Canada, but it was, it was a lot. Um, and then Kellen can speak to the rest of it. He handled all the actual product side of everything. So, you know, the shipping and, you know, know managing all the actual well essentially our entire cold seller right now is a warehouse at the end of the day yeah kellen do you want to speak into that at all making sure everything goes out properly to the right person especially with how canada post is um or just any type of shipping um right now everything's delayed so you get a lot of customers coming and saying, where is this? Where is this? Where is this? Um, and sometimes you're just, your hands are tied. So making sure that, you know, it's out on time. Uh, the shipping label is perfect. Cause if you don't get a unit number, then it's coming back and then you got to reship it. And then, so there you lose, you lose money essentially. If, if you have to keep sending things out and, or if it gets lost, uh, there's a, there's a lot to go into it with, with that. Uh, I mean, you have to be, it's slow and steady. Sometimes so you got to make sure everything is perfect. As hard yeah. as that, like, you're, you know, it, it, there is no real perfect, but it's as best as you can. Um, it's interesting because I think that we often, um, especially with physical products, we don't always fully appreciate the logistics and operational side of things until you're in it. Completely. Yeah. Like how easy it is to say to yourself, it's okay, we just have to do some shipping. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <Every day. laughs> that shipping so means matching phone, up sorry, right. inventory. Yeah, sorry. No, but it's like matching up your inventory. There's so much more to it than just printing a shipping label. Um, and my advice to anybody is be kind to your Canada Post employees. <laughs> they will get to know you. They will get to oh. love you. Pre-print your label. Pre-package your items if you can. You'll have a great great relationship and it really does streamline the process all of these packages but it does it feels like a simple another simple thing to say right like we'll just get this shipping out and it'll be no problem in our case a lot of times it's getting all the shipping ready we're still packing up kids school lunches we're making sure that we're prepared we both have full-time jobs in addition to this so we're getting all those meetings ready for the day as well and it's there's a lot of moving pieces for us to even get out the door by eight o'clock clock so everybody's moderately on time and that's typically when our <laughs> shipping goes out as well yeah of course all at the same time why would it yeah. be any other way um <laughs> yeah. so before we wrap this up i'm going to ask each of you is there is there anything that you want to emphasize or you want to leave our listeners with um a, you know whether it's a lesson something that you said something you want to add Ask for help, reach out to your network. And by network, it doesn't need to be a big fancy group of professional X, Y, and Z. Um, it could be a close friend. It could be a parent that's really good at spell checking for you. It can be whatever, but it, reach out to your network, ask for help when you need it and trust people when you, when you give them those tasks. That's great. Thank you, Margie. Kellen, do you have anything you want to add? Patience. <laughs> it just it's the hardest thing just being I, I know it sounds crazy because the world we live in it's just it's go 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 patience just take a step back it's it everything comes together you just got to take a step back take a deep breath it'll happen we we have to say that to ourselves daily <laughs> it's a really important reminder um so for our listeners, you can find out more about uh, Margie and Kellen at highpeaknutrition.com. That will also be in the show notes. Um, and you should definitely go check them out and check out what they're up to in the world. Margie and Kellen, thank you for being on the show today. It's been really great getting to know you. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. Thank you. And yeah. And for the listeners, thanks for listening to Canada's podcast, like comment and subscribe to all our channels to get the latest podcast from entrepreneurs across Canada.